What's going on YouTube? It's your girl Miss Honey. <sighs> okay. So this is actually a uh, part de <laughs> of my Queen Sugar video because I had to leave and go to work this morning and I couldn't finish recording. But I didn't want to rush it and just like snapshot shot it because I feel so patient um passionately about um this show I really really wanted to get my feelings out about it you know anywho um Miss Honey's back um with ashy hands listen okay so we left off we talked about Nova and you know her character this scene we talked about um Charlie and her the, some things that her character did this scene okay and we still have a couple of more characters to go because I really want us to kind of flesh this all out as we kind of semi review but really recap and exegete pull apart overthink you know what I'm saying <laughs> okay so um we did not talk about Ralph Angel Ralph Angel um this episode evergreen um is called evergreen you know he's a it's apparent to me that he's the baby um and um you know like a lot of men um he doesn't really have all of the emotional tools he needs to handle every situation well um i think he loves a uh, little blue and i think he um wants his son to be good and great and taken care of but there's a part of him that don't want the responsibility right now either I'm just saying okay we see um, Ralph Angel in several different scenes um, one of which uh, we see him go um, you know in a scene where he's in the living room uh, of auntie's house auntie Violet's house Charlie walks in after she's gone by her dad's property the, the farm and um, you know he and Nova in tandem sort of shoot every question that that Charlie has out of the air you know and lets her know hey listen we've done everything we took care of that we took care of that we took care of that you don't have to worry about nothing well of course Charlie's feeling some type of way I don't think and I could be wrong it really didn't seem like he would have been that short in that matter of factly with Charlie to me if Nova wasn't there it kind of seems like Nova <laughs> and 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 Ralph Angel kind of you know have more of an alliance maybe it's because Charlie lives somewhere else maybe it's because you know and they stay there in the same city you know maybe it's because we hear um, Nova reply to Charlie's questions about the, whose, whose flowers are these that's your mama's now we like I said we you know we talked about our that already we don't know what the term your mama your mom what what term you know we don't know for sure what that means <clears throat> although we suspect but um he just has sort of this really he sort of mimics Nova in a way I mean Nova's personality doesn't really seem like it would be mimicking Ralph Angel he sort of mimics her in a way in this sort of matter factly dismissal to me that showed a, a, a real young side of him a little immaturity um 
I don't know how long he was in prison, but you know, maybe it's also because he's a male, he has a little, you know, he's a little standoffish. We don't know. And I had time to think about it during the day when I thought, you know, I said to myself, well, we'll talk about that last. But anyway, um, we see him at the funeral home, at the funeral home scene where he's once again this sort of, you know, auxiliary character back here while the sisters, you know, talk and converse and handle each other. It, it's not a battle he could necessarily get in anyway. Like, I don't know if he could get in the middle of the two of them and come out unscathed he's he's a man but verbally and mentally he's these women <laughs> um he still is a man you know and speaks up when they are discussing the financial um contributions of everyone and i'll just take ralph angel i'll take ralph angel y'all mean like he did you know take your brother <laughs> you can go to the mall but you gotta take your brother <laughs> Baba, can I go to Lisa's house? You can, but you gotta take your brother. So, um, but he pipes up, he speaks up, and he says, "Hey, listen, um, don't talk about me like I'm not here." Although he feels a measure of shame, he still needs them to contribute. I'm gonna have this Friday. Well, then, no, not unless you're gonna do something between now and Friday, which we don't need you to be doing because your son needs you to be on the out side of the prison system now i don't know we don't know if they know that he's stealing but at the same time this is a lie that nobody believes is what i'm saying not a lie but it it, it, it it's an excuse or reasoning that no one is buying not me not you <laughs> subbies and not your sisters but at the same time, you know, he balks up. He finds this opportunity when talking with the, with the, with the um, funeral director, um, to show once again that he is a man and a protector at whatever level he can be with his siblings. Um, I find it hard to take. Um, I, 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 I we're, I'm not sure. I mean, how much of his upbringing did Ralph Angel have his mother? He just seems... A little slower. A little slower paced. You know, I mean, he's got... Anyway. Um, we see a little bit later this conversation uh, that his aunt tries to have with him about... Um, taking his son to um, Papa's um, home going service and uh, he doesn't want him to be there and he's very clear and very articulated articulate about the fact he doesn't want him to see death he doesn't want to see him to see a casket he doesn't want him to see these things which kind of leads me to believe that there's a little bit more brewing in behind this whole jail time situation story like what's up Ralph Angel. Um, but he's very clear about it, uh, why he doesn't want to go. And I partially halfway understand. I certainly understand Aunt Violet's point about he needs to grieve too. He needs to mourn too, meaning, meaning, um, Blue. You know, he loved Papa too. So I can understand her point of view too, but I certainly understand um, Ralph Angel's need to protect his son from pain, from disappointment. Okay? Um, but good luck with that, Ralph Angel. <laughs> good luck. Um... So he's committed to this. He he goes to the school to drop Ralph Angel off. And in this moment, we address the Barbie, so to speak. You know, address this Barbie doll. And this Barbie doll's name is Kenya. 
Okay, don't know very many Caucasian women named Kenya. So, I'm going to go out on the limb and say Kenya's a sister. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, dad runs up behind him as he's going to school. He knows his bar. Kenya's in the back of the... <laughs> In the back of the uh, book bag, and he runs up, picks it up, puts it in his jacket, turns him around, say, "Hey, have a great day." Remember, um, we talked about you leaving Kenya with me. Remember, uh, she's gonna hang out with me today, and um, it was kind of like a transition into a much kinder way to speak because when he saw that Barbie, he kind of was like, "Oh my God." <laughs> Hell no, you can't take this to school. This ain't gonna be good for nobody if you take Kenya up in this schoolhouse, okay? <laughs> but um, he immediately finds this sort of common ground, you know, this compassionate route where he talks to a uh, little blue and, you know, try to, yeah, you know, makes it all imagination. <laughs> Shout out to Spongebob. Imagination. Kenya's going to stay with me today. I mean, she's going to hang out with me. And you make sure she doesn't watch too much TV, Dad. I don't want her to get overdose on all that ratchet reality TV stuff. Okay, no loving you. <laughs> Atlanta, Dad. Anyway, um, out comes the teacher and sort of diverts the conversation and you know as she's been able to do she's sort of this um baking soda effect i mean she you know takes a little bit of the acid out of the out of the situation okay um good at what she does the the kids love her um and he has this sort of eye for her but at the same time he got too many fish to fry. He got bigger fish to fry. I can see that he finds her attractive, but I can also see that Ralph, Day, that Ralph Angel got a lot on his mind. He got a lot on his mind. He got a lot of growing up to do. He got a lot of responsibilities. He's got a lot of people looking. He's got a huge, huge, huge shadow of his dad, Ernest, who is obviously this upstanding man in the community. <laughs> and he don't have no resources uh, as far as we know any education uh, to help him out of it help him grow help him build ease the you know saying he got a lot of shit he got to get done in a little amount of time how can I become the man that I'm supposed to be tomorrow and I ain't got no money. I ain't got no job. I ain't got no prospects for money or prospects for job. And I'm doing the same shit or the same kind of shit I was doing to go to jail, which disappointed everybody in the first place. He got a lot on his mind. She cute. She fine and all. But I got, I got, I yeah, first things first. Can you babysit for me? She can't do it. She got some other things she got to do on Saturday. Okay, fine, that's cool. But, you know, so he leaves there and he, you know, after that, Ralph Angel makes this, you know, call that he doesn't want to make, especially since he acted like a, a spoiled brat, spoiled bitter brat in that hospital parking lot, you know, and dismissed the, Dismiss the uh, blues mom. Now he's got to call her and ask her to come. He don't really, really want to do it. Not just because he acted like an ass to her, but because, also because, oh, now of all time, I not I don't need this disappointment. Not now. Please don't disappoint me now. Now of all times. I need you more than ever now. Blue needs you more than ever now. Please don't disappoint him. I don't even want to put that responsibility on you. Because I already know you. You know what I'm saying. Not now. He don't need it now on top of everything else. Losing Papa. He don't need it now. But he makes the call and asks her. And she's excited. She, that's fine her schedule works out great and even if it doesn't she's gonna change switch with someone which she does she switches okay and she um um 
makes arrangements, but the the man won't let her off work. Um, unbeknownst to him, anyway, he is in the bathroom mirror, Ralph Angel, and he's cutting, and in, in comes the son. He wants to get his hair cut because he's going to be with Mama, and I want to look nice, Dad. This kid is smart. He's smart. He's funny. Um, not loves his son. He's emotionally tied to his son. They have a super deep connection, but but years of traditional thinking is hard to get over. Um, especially when you don't necessarily have the aptitude to deal with things emotionally anyway, for whatever reason. But <clears throat> he he always kind of concedes. You know, he gives in in a way. You know, the son. Uh, has a way of blue has a way of asking and delivering the information where dad where he may not give all the way he does make some concession and that shows his love and his uh, tenderness for his son so he gets I, I got to cut my own hair he's like but I really want to be nice dad I want to be sharp for mom okay I've got this blue suit I'm gonna wear <laughs> um so he calls him over and sits him down and gets him the towel. And my dad cut my brother's hair. So both of my brother's hair. So all the time in the bathroom with the towel and con conversed and talked and all that. I mean, it just, y'all, y'all don't know. Anyway, um, so, uh, you know, he goes to cut Blue's hair and um, the clippers are going to be sharp. It's going to bite a little bit. Blue's okay. He's brave. Um the aunt comes in you know they sit little little kenya you know on the sink get her all set up there so she can watch <laughs> watch her, watch blue get a haircut watch daddy cut blue hair aunt comes in and you know she finds out at this moment that the son isn't blue isn't going to the funeral you know that she's not me and her in um you know she leaves out she doesn't say a word you know she wanted them on you already know that her energy her aura told you she disappointed the way she turned around and walked out of the room let you know you need to go and have conversation with her and squash this and explain yourself and get you know what i'm saying make sure she all right with the situation and she tells him about you know I don't think it's right and you know this woman she speaks this venom which you know in the first um, in the first you know uh, episode she gave me this really bubbly vibe but she speaks this you know this you know sort of venomous comment like you know about Blue's mom that leads you to believe that you know she's had it with her and so you know he kind of sort of it, it tries to explain why he doesn't want to be wants his son to be in that position and this is you know the what's best and is what he's decided and she walks on off because um he's he's asserting himself as a man and as a father he believes this this is what he really feels is the right thing the right thing is um I feel to keep my son away from this situation and everything that may occur regarding this situation so she walks off kudos for Ralph Angel you know whether I, I feel that he should go or not kudos for him for speaking up anyway um, we see them at the front door now waiting for mommy and five more minutes and dad's like no we gotta go well you know dad is clean okay <laughs> okay he is whistle stop clean I all white that beautiful dog 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 chocolate midnight dog chocolate skin mm. ah, ah, ah. up until this point I didn't really find him attractive like that but in that white I was like yeah I see you boo come through coffee <laughs> uh, anyway and you know sun comes on back blue comes on back in um we see this moment where we are at the funeral and there's all of these men you know it's dad's lodge brothers or whomever they were i don't know how this is maybe how they do funerals in louisiana or they may have been his lodge brothers um 
friends, whatever, and they have this poignant conversation. We see Nova hold their hands and, uh, oh, no, this is after. Blue is in his lap. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful scene of a black man and his son. Hollywood's there and Auntie's there. And we see Mom walking up sort of out of the mist, you know. And Blue runs and she hugs him and then she takes him back to his seat. Well, uh, Ralph Angel was about to get up and go over there in Hollywood and his wisdom stopped him and said, now's not the time. And that was the best thing that Hollywood could have done for Ralph Angel is stop him from ruining his dad's home going because that's not something his dad would have wanted and the best thing Ralph Angel could have done was listen and do it and he had this moment with his sisters this, that wasn't um, defiled by anger and you know gritting of the teeth and you know it wasn't necessary okay so I I like Ralph Angel I don't know even if we don't know Be, we can't assume because Ralph Angel is dark-skinned and uh, Nova is dark-skinned that they got the same mama and that because Charlie is lighter skin, she must have a different mama. We really don't know what's going on right now. And as we know in our own lives how diverse our lineage is, go on down through the lineage, you see how diverse our own personal lineage is. And we see it amongst our family and friends and reading how diverse African American lineages are. So we don't know. It, you know, I think that Charlie could be the oldest at moments. Looking at her, maybe she isn't the oldest of all. Uh, maybe she isn't the middle child of all of them. Maybe she's only in the middle because her mama was the first. And those two always had each other. We don't know. We don't know. Maybe it might be Charlie, Nova. Ralph Angel. I still stick with Ralph Angel at the bottom, but I'm not sure who's the oldest, Charlie or Nova. Not, 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 not sure. I want to talk about the aunt real quick, Aunt Violet, because we see Aunt Violet sort of change a little bit from this place of happiness and giddiness, and she runs into this smack dab into this reality. Um, of everything you know things are changing you know certainly she's grieving her brother or brother-in-law certainly she's you know torn apart in grief by this uh, you can't help but be when you when you have someone in your same demographic pass away it makes you feel mortal that much more mortal you know it makes you feel vulnerable it makes you feel older and weaker and smaller and more human you forget this place of happiness and giddiness that she had just fooling around with Hollywood in the last um, episode and we see she's concerned she's concerned because what if Hollywood won't kid so now we know Hollywood's younger than she is and although he's saying like he really really like her what if he want to have children and he want to reassure her okay but she a woman and she know she know for a lot of men your value and your worth lies in your womb even though they might try to squash that because they really, really do love you. It's a part of them that going to always want a child. Somewhere. Depends on if he's man enough to handle it. A man enough to make the adjustments. But I feel like she's been using blue. Which is why another reason, not just because the blue's mom has had some drug issues. But because... Blue was left in her care. She took care of Blue while Blue's daddy was in the hospital. I mean, in the in the jail pen, penitentiary. <laughs> Shout out to my friend Stephanie in the penitentiary, and the mom was I strung out on drugs. So it seemed like her and Papa raised Blue, 
and having blue there was like having a child there and having a child there was something else that she could say here look this is what else i offer i'm vibrant and beautiful and wonderful i got my own house and everything in my own life but also i'm also offering this child um that you can use in the interim to continue to love me okay no matter what age you are, there is this self-esteem that all women have. We toy. We like our hair. We hate our eyebrows. <laughs> you say we like our lips, but we don't like our nose. Our nose could be a little slimmer. You know? It's just being a woman. It's the nature of things. So, you know, he, she's outside on the, on the, in the boat, you know, sitting and, uh, um, she said, well, I'm going to lose blue. She's telling Hollywood this, I'm going to lose blue. She doesn't say, I'm going to lose blue, and therefore I think I'm going to lose you. But she does say that in a way, in, all, in, in the context. This is what she's saying, and, and, and uh, uh, Hollywood kind of assures her. It's at this moment, Micah comes out and wants to know if they have a basketball, and they all go inside. Also, we see um, with Auntie that... Um, she's worried she's concerned things are about to change you can feel the storm of change rolling in with each episode <clears throat> good bad or indifferent there's a storm brewing and you can see that worry in in auntie violet's face I wanted to touch really quickly and then I'm going to get off about Blue and the, and the Barbie doll. I am not prepared yet to say that the Barbie doll is his mom. And that is all. I do think the Barbie doll reminds him of his mom. She seems very similar to his mom. But I don't think that that doesn't mean that Blue isn't gay. Just because he thinks that the Barbie doll is mom doesn't mean he's not a gay little boy. He could still be a gay little boy. There's a lot of gay little boys that are in love with their mom at a young age and how beautiful they are. I'm not saying a little boy gay. I'm not saying it matters. I'm just saying, even if he does think the Barbie is his mom, doesn't mean he ain't gay. Let's all just get prepared. <laughs> I think he's a smart, funny little boy. And I think he, you know, <coughs> his character is going to um, help to knit this family together. I think Blue has what it takes to knit this family together. And I think Papa gave that to Blue. So that's all I'm focusing on with Blue. But let the record show. <laughs> okay, y'all, let me get off this thing. I've been talking too long. I love, love, love this episode. Anywho, y'all, um, if y'all have not <laughs> are not watching or following this series, please, please get into it. I hope I've said something to help you guys get into it. I know this is going to be a little bit of a long review, but I'm not going to compromise. I want to get my feelings out there. I want to build a community of being able to really, really talk things through. Y'all, put your comments in the bottom. Let me know what you think. Let's talk about this thing. Let's pull this thing apart. You know what I'm saying? See what we got here. Let's put this thing up on, on the rack. Okay? Um, until next time, um, honeybees. Ooh, I love that. Okay? 